Hey everyone, welcome to another conversation with Curtis. For those of you joining me for the very first time, welcome. And for those of you who have been with me for a while, welcome back. Uh, this project just seems to be getting deeper and richer and more fun with each episode. And I am so glad to have you along for the ride. And today is no exception. I'm really excited about my guest today for a number of reasons. My guest is Stephen W. Bailey. He is a very prolific and busy actor based out of Los Angeles, California. He has appeared in dozens of commercials and television shows and uh, feature films. But of course, you all know him as Cyrus in Phantasmagoria. Stephen and I go way back. Uh, Steve was actually one of my very first friends when I moved to Seattle back in 1992. We were cast in a couple of projects together that year and uh, formed a very fast friendship that lasted for a long time. Uh, we both moved to Los Angeles around the same time in 1996, spent about four years hanging out there. And then I moved back to Seattle in 2001 and Steve decided to stay there where he's been ever since. And over the years, we've lost touch. And um, today we're gonna talk to each other for the first time in probably 15, 16 years. So I am very excited to share that with you and I hope you enjoy this conversation. But before I share that with you, I just wanna do a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, mainly, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, please like this video and please help us spread the word. It seems like every day someone lets me know that they just found out about this channel. In fact, uh, about five minutes ago, there was a YouTuber who said, oh my God, I just found this channel, that's so great. Uh, which makes me very happy. And the more you can help me spread that word, the more we can get people to find us. Uh, one more thing I do want to thank, as always, my Patreon members for making this project possible. Truly, if it wasn't for you, we would not be able to sustain this project and give you the content that we're doing with these interviews and the, uh, the playthroughs of these retro games that we've been playing. Uh, so thank you so much for your support and your contributions. And for those of you who aren't Patreon members, please consider joining us even for a little while. Every little bit helps. Even if you come on for just a month or two, you can opt out right after that. That would be great. All right. I think that's it. Everybody, please enjoy my interview with Stephen W. Bailey. Whoa. Hello, Mr. Statler. Everything you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> how you doing look at that I'm well man how are you doing oh buddy it is so good to see you it's been years my friend years yes and we're both rocking you're rocking a much more much cooler mustache than i am i gotta say well, that's the money maker right there <laughs> it's literally how i get paid nowadays did uh did you have a moment where where that you realized that was gonna uh well that was, was gonna get you some jobs well, there was a moment where I grew a mustache and realized I had a really good mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it starts right there, right? <laughs> and then the gigs, they just started rolling in. Um, Steve, w, Stephen W. Bailey, welcome to Conversations with Curtis, buddy. I'm sorry? Said, welcome to Conversations with Curtis. Oh, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Do the, does I'm, the audience I'm a, know our personal relationship? No, 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 no. They know. Uh, that, yeah, we'll get into that. Right. I, I've, I've given them some. Uh, I've given them some hints. Yeah, I, I've become a professional YouTuber since I saw you last. So I'm. That's great. I'm a. Okay. I'm, I'm a. I'm, I'm big deal in in a small, <laughs> in a small section of the world. That's all you got to be. That's all you got to be. <laughs> so I, I know the last time we saw each other was a weird little moment where. Um, where I, uh, it was probably five or six years ago, uh, my family and I were going to, we flew down to LA, we flew into Burbank, we got a good, good flight to Burbank, spent the night in a hotel, and then we were working our way down to San Diego, and the night, the morning we woke up, we just walked down out of our hotel, and we were trying to find a breakfast place, and we found some, some place, and you were standing out there with uh, a friend of yours yeah yeah and we just like right. literally ran into each other that on the street so bizarre yeah it was with my friend kelsey 
Wow. Yeah, you I would, totally <laughs> forgot about that. That uh, it's like an egg, the egg place. The yeah, egg we had like a five minute conversation because we couldn't get in. It was too crowded. My kids were <laughs> super hungry, and we were like, "Oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a much years. Bye." <laughs> yeah, I remember turning to Kelsey afterwards and just being like, "I can't even begin to tell you how random that is. That is yeah. the most bizarre." thing ever it totally was but before that i mean i i don't think i don't think i've seen you in seattle so I, i'm the only thing i can think of is that it must have been like right around the time i left la for seattle right in 2000 2001 or something i mean i can't remember yeah, when we hung out last probably yeah probably around that time because i didn't go up you know my family I can't remember the timetable at all, but like my family doesn't even live in Seattle anymore. Like oh, I they don't, don't. Go, No, they're all in Eugene, Oregon now. So when oh. I go home to see family, I don't even go to Seattle. So oh, so no more it's Edmonds. Like, it's not like I've been completely ditching people. I just don't. I just don't go up there. Right, know? right. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, my entire family's in Eugene now. It's kind of an okay. Thing. That's a story for another day. Yeah, story for another day. It sounds good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, last I remember is I know we had a fairly regular poker party at the, the cell B house that I lived in. And uh, right. that might have been like around that time, or maybe just, a, you know, a, like we got a drink before I moved up to Seattle. But anyway, yeah, right around then. I can't 20, the time, you know, it's so long ago. Yeah, 20 uh, years ago. Anyways, yeah. how, how, how have things been? Everything good? Everything's fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> over the last 20 years uh there's been ups and downs strikes and gutter balls as they say yeah uh, yeah you know Sweet. i just still just down here chugging along not smart enough to leave la like other people well you've had the the, the blessing and the curse of getting just enough work to just screw me over. enough yeah, yeah to, you know <laughs> just enough work to ruin just, my life just I'm enough uh, residual checks that kind of come in and make you go oh okay all right i can do this still <laughs> just enough to sacrifice everything yeah and, and and just barely go like all right that was a that was a career yeah, speaking of speaking of residual checks i got one the other day there we go what's that i'm an old man two dollars $2.43. $2 that's nothing, dude. That's nothing. I've gotten three cent residual checks before. <laughs> three cent. You know, there was a place, and it was actually uh, recently featured in the show Barry. Uh, There's a place called Residuals in Studio City. I don't know. I remember. It, and, um, and as it was, rem it doesn't still exist as it, as it used to be. It's still around, I guess. But back in the day, if you brought a residual check in for under like a dollar or something, Get a free drink. They would nail it on the wall and give you a free beer. But I remember going to that bar, and in my mind, it was going to be this, you know, this great dive bar, and it yeah. was just going to be plastered to just residual checks everywhere. There's a bar in in, in Alaska. Um, it's right on the spit and it's uh, I forgot the name of it. It's like this classic bar in, in Alaska and everybody uh, puts a dollar bill. They write something on a dollar bill and they put it. And so that whole bar is just filled with dollar bills on the wall. And it's really I cool. I think I've been to that place. Yeah. And so I thought it was going to be like that, but it's way cleaner than I expected it to be. It was just like they had, they would put them up, but they only had like one little area. It wasn't nearly as, as cool as I thought it would be. I had the same feeling, but I felt like it, maybe it's, it, maybe it's always felt like, disappointing like what we were talking about but i felt like it used to be more by it must, the time i went there it was yeah maybe by the time we got to it it wasn't but maybe it was cool. always disappointing maybe everybody <laughs> always wanted to be like life <laughs> like life in general like life <laughs> it ends up being disappointing that's just the way it is well <laughs> hey man this is so great and and so i'm gonna this is gonna be a little bit of a this is your life kind of okay. uh event um uh, we got a lot to cover and I'm excited to, to talk about uh, and you sent me some pictures today that just blew my brain wide. Yeah, open. man, and, I knew they would. And uh, so we'll look at those. And uh, <laughs> but I do want to start with um, I watched uh, I've done this with two other interviews recently, and, and I, I think I'm getting better at it. So hopefully you'll be the beneficiary of, of my earlier mistakes. But I I like to get the guests to kind of tell just give us a little sense of their, their life. And so I'd been telling them to tell their life story in three minutes or less, just quickly try to get through it. And then that was okay, but not everybody, it wasn't quite as specific as I wanted. So I watched the, um, the master recently, you know, the Paul Thomas Anderson movie with yeah, Joaquin yeah. Phoenix and, and if he's, you know, it's, it's, it's basically about Scientology and uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman just 
uh, they have a moment where I think they're called like processing or something, but he just rattles a bunch of questions at, at Joaquin Phoenix, like oh, just boy. quick answers. And so I'm going to set a five minute timer and I'm going to try, we're going to try to get through your entire life in five minutes or less. No wrong answers, right? No wrong, no wrong answers, answers, but we got to go quick. This is not okay. going to be, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into other stuff later, but right now you got to just oh, give me, give me the, all right, let me start this sucker. And then. Oh, not 20. Start the time. Put the timer on the big board. On the big board. It will be on the big board when, when this plays live on our on our YouTube premiere. All right. Let's see. Let me get you over here. Let me get my questions right here. All right. Here we go. Where did you grow up? Uh, born in San Diego. Grew up in Seattle. What was the name of your neighborhood? Seaview. Seaview. Is that Edmonds? Seaview Edmonds, yeah, right. right down the street from Seaview Park and, and in between Seaview Park and Seaview Elementary. I remember right. having a couple of Thanksgivings at your parents' house. For sure, who, yeah. Speaking of your parents, who are your parents? Uh, Larry and Anita Bailey. What did they do? Uh, my father is a professor of psychology, was, he's retired now at a small Bible college in, in Edmonds, Washington for many years. He's also a 30-year, uh, well, six-year uh, active, 20-some-odd-year uh, uh, reservist naval officer. And my mother was uh, a raiser of four children and, and whatnot like that. She passed away uh, a year and a half ago or so, but my okay. father's still with us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. But yeah. Uh, she um, had a great life. Yeah. Uh, you have siblings. You have three kids, three siblings. Tell me. Uh, yeah, one elder brother and two younger sisters. Did you get along as kids? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did for, I mean, as much as kids do, you know, right. I mean, yeah, we had strong relationships. For sure. Do you I mean, get along now? Yes, absolutely. More so now, I think, you know, the, our adult relationships are, you know, obviously when we're kids, you're tormenting each other <laughs> a lot, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not as close. I mean, they all live very close to each other. Uh, my, it, literally they all live within a couple of miles of each other in Eugene and I'm kind of the out, outcast down here in LA, but so I get up terrible. there whenever I can. I'm sorry. They're not too far. I mean, not too can, far. No. And yeah. it's great because it's like one stop shopping. You know, they're all there. Yeah. Uh, my one of my sisters is about to move to Northern California, but up until now, it's been everything there. Okay. And uh, moving yeah, on, I'm moving on. Great. Here we go. Where did you go to elementary school? Seaview Elementary School, Edmonds, Washington. What were you like as a kid? Uh, probably annoying. <laughs> I've always been a sensitive lad. Uh, I was always, uh, you know, one to be quick to get upset and cry and whatnot. And, but I had to overcome that over time. <laughs> Strangely, I became an actor. Nobody knows why. I don't get you it. have complete control of your emotions now. Uh, name one of your child. Name one of your childhood obsessions. I was really into flying as a kid. I am still am. I actually got a pilot's license as an adult uh, for a little while. I did that. But when I was a kid, I just always spent a lot of time. My dad would take me to uh, uh, air shows and stuff like that. And being in Seattle, Boeing, whatnot. Was always yeah. There. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. That's People awesome. I had, had a Mooney, a 1965 Mooney. We flew around in and stuff. It was pretty cool. Dang. Okay. I want to hear more about that. How yeah. did you survive middle school? Middle school is weird because I had, I went to four different schools in four years. I went to, you know, elementary school, sixth grade. CV elementary school. And then I went to college place middle school and then they moved around the, uh, the barriers or whatever, <laughs> a school closed or whatever. So I went to Meadowdale middle school. And then I went to Meadowdale high school in ninth grade. So our school was, I love, I get just seventh and eighth where we were at. Gotcha. So, yeah. I mean, I was just, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was always uh, the newer guy or whatever and, and hanging out. Um, that's when I first started getting into acting back then, actually, I remember doing a play in eighth grade called Airport Adventure. It was an original work, I believe, by the teacher. <laughs> of course. Me, it was, it was, it was yeah, yeah. That was it's actually a funny story. It's one of my earliest memories of acting was uh, I was on this really crappy stage in like a, a, a school room, you know, just flats, you know, and I played this like security guard and I, I had business, but a lot of time I stood there, you know, and there was a little peephole right in the wall where the teacher would look in and go like, hey, what's going on? And I would purposely, I just remember I was just a jerk. I'd purposely like stand in front of the people so he couldn't say anything. <laughs> and so I was just like every, every time. Anyway, and so uh, we'll go five minutes. We got five minutes. Go, we got go, five go. minutes, right. We're running out of time here. Uh, we got a minute and three seconds left. Um, uh, what was the first book you read that blew your mind? Catch 22. What was the first movie you saw in a theater that blew your mind? Probably Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, that's a strong image in my mind, yeah. yeah. Uh, were you popular in high school? 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I was the theater nerd. I was like the head of the theater department. I did announcements over the, the PA in the morning, you know. Nice, nice. Announced oh. Stephen Marcus in the morning, you know. <laughs> what was the first music concert you went to? First concert. I, people should know that. I don't know that off the top of my head. I want to say R.E.M. It might have been, you know, I had this weird experience where I went and saw a Poi Dog Pondering show. If you remember those guys? Oh, I've heard of, I remember them kind of. Anyway, yeah. It was like a all ages show and I was like 17. That might've been the first one. Okay. I don't know. Anyway. What was the first, what was your favorite video arcade game as a teenager? Tank, uh, the tank battle, the, uh, you, oh. the whatever this is. Yeah, uh, I remember battle that. Zone. Battle zone. I remember that. What was no, the first, was like punch out a lot. what was the first computer game you ever played? You know, I don't remember what it was called, but I remember back in the day, my buddy had a Commodore 64. We really had cassette tapes that you would put in, you know, and play these little, you know, Qbert kind of games and stuff on the computer. I remember right. that. I don't know if that really qualifies what you're talking about, like these I don't know. modern computer games. But Yeah, it's a funny thing is, is that I somehow got, because I acted in a video game a long time ago, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm immersed in the world of, of video games. And so I... I'm beginning to talk like I understand video games, but I don't. I don't play them. I'm, I've played five games, four games in my life. Um, all right. Uh, the first one. I well, can keep. It's, it's all about you. Did you go to college? I did not go to undergrad. I have a very strange educational arc. I went out of grad school and I did a bunch of theater in Seattle with you. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and then I was fortunate enough to go to ACT, American Conservatory Theater, which is a grad program. But uh, we had this thing, they had this thing called there that was colloquially called the, the Schmo program, where they let in a couple of people every year who just had a strong resume that didn't have an undergrad degree. So I'm a graduate of a graduate program, but I don't have a graduate degree. And my fellow classmates I went with, they all have graduate degrees. So gotcha. it was me and two other guys. So I, I've, a, I, I've been to graduate school. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a grad you student. <laughs> um, were you a good student? Well, I was a terrible academic student in life. That's why I ended up in acting school. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have to do a bunch of like st acting school. It was just, you know, there's no wrong answers, generally speaking. You know? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, uh, give, me, give me a quick rundown of all the jobs or some of the jobs you had to get by as, you're, you know, as you were trying to make the acting thing work. Oh, well, I waited tables, of course. Uh, what else? I waited tables a number of places. Probably the weirdest job I ever had. Well, I was working at a video store. That's not that weird, but people don't remember what video stores are, so I guess it's weird. But I was working exactly. at a video store, and we had this regular that came in who asked me if I wanted this other like side job, you know. And I would go into this place, and literally, I can't even. I don't even know why I bring it up. It's hard to describe. They took a bunch of different colored papers and like the stuff that made it bind together, put it in a blender with water, blended it up, and then you took this pulpy color stuff. And you would shove it into like cookie molds and different designs and stuff. And then it would dry and they would put like a pin on the back and they became like these pins. That people it was the strangest job <laughs> I've ever done. And I would go in at night. I was paid by piece, like 30 cents a piece or whatever. And I would go in at night and play punk rock music when no one else was there. And I would just take over the place. I'd have like 30 blenders going and just like do it all as quick as I could. I've never heard that Ashing story. Ashing paper pulp into cookie molds. It was the strangest thing. I don't know if they still exist. They were in Edmonds, Washington. We should try to find them. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was it called? Do you remember the name of it? I have no idea. Man. Okay. It's no <laughs> a strange thing. Um, okay, I got, I got four more questions. Yeah. Uh, are you handy with power tools? Absolutely. Ooh. Woodworking is a hobby of mine, for sure. Ooh, and I, I think I, I do. Help. That's what I do in my free time. Uh, oh, I, I guess I got away from, I, I, I should have changed this. So uh, what was the last video game you ever played? Well, I'm all about, I play the, I'm, I'm big into the Oculus. I'm a VR guy. I like the Oculus. I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge gamer. I'm like a old 50 year old gamer guy who likes the slow. I can't do the fast shooting games or whatever, but I love to go into the VR world and like mess around. There's some games in there. That's oh. I, like. I, don't, I don't play the, I don't, uh, I got a PS uh, three, I think. <laughs> 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 i love my oculus too i just love 3d stuff in general i always have um i have a 1903 uh stereo viewer antique you know if anybody knows what that is it's very very beginnings of 3d stuff with the two pictures side by side and 
your eyes create 3D, but it's from 1903. You know, so I've been collecting stuff like that for a while. So oh, that's VR so cool. is like my, like, you know, I, that's, I'm way more into 3D stuff than other people are. It's I, we, annoying for people who know me. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I, I, we did our first, um, my, my, when we were, I told you about we, us being in Marin Theater Company. Yeah, yeah. And so my kids came up for a visit and, and one of the cast members had a VR and, other than this Van Gogh exhibit we did where I put one on, I'd never been on one before. And we did this thing where we were in a shark tank and uh, it went, you know, got, got dropped into the waters and it yeah. was, you know, you, it was, you knew, you knew it was a virtual world, but oh my goodness, it was, it was amazing. Oh, there's, some, there's some games out there now, this thing I, I do, it's not a game, it's an app, it's an experience, it's called Brink. And you just, they've done this thing where they create a photo, uh, a digital mesh of the entire environment. Like I'm sure people, your gaming people know what I'm talking about. And then they take the, so they take a photo, they scan a whole area and then they take the photos and put on that digital mesh to make it a really strong 3D experience. So it's not flat like photo. You get in there and the rocks around you look like they're really rocks and they're separated from the mountains there. And you can literally in your VR space with your hand, reach out and like rub the sides of the rocks and you get vibration feedback and the, it's crazy dude it's what's crazy. this called uh brink brink and they just have like you know 10 different locations right now but they're going to get more you're just like sitting at the horseshoe bend of the grand canyon and there's air and, and they have all these birds flying around and they're obviously not just on a digital loop like it used to be on the video games we did it's they're on some kind of randomized thing so they're just flying and they just you can watch them fly and they never do the exact same thing again like in the sky they have airplane things and if you sit in the space they don't just go this far and jump back they just go and keep going like oh, you're just standing there it's crazy anyway oh man oh, we're to we're totally gonna do it it's yeah. it's um the <laughs> uh yeah, it's funny because um, you know how, how, you know, parents are like trying to get their kids off of playing games. Yeah. But things have changed so much that now our kids are on their iPads playing games. So they're in this, they're just sort of like there. And so we're trying to get them off their iPads so that we can actually play, you know, Xbox Bigger games. games. Right. So we can all play. Yeah. You know, at least we can play together. Put you away know. your little screens, guys. Put so we can get screens. to a bigger screen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how things have changed. Um, all right, last two questions. What was the last to do item you checked off of your work list? I, uh, what did the last? Oh, I just yesterday sent a bunch of stuff to my accountant for taxes. Okay, that's a good one. Okay. What was the, you're a little late there, pal. What was the last? Well, you know, I got a whole system in place. Then. <laughs> and finally, what was the last to-do item you checked off of your home list? I, I, I did laundry yesterday. All right. Does that count? Yeah, that counts. That list? counts. Uh, I, I paused. I paused it. Oh, okay. It feels like now we did our five minutes. It was, it was more than five. Seven right? and a half. I went <laughs> off a All right. Um, yeah, man. So, so this is great. So when, when I, <laughs> I moved to, I moved to Seattle in 1992, um, right out of grad school and the very first play, uh, either I auditioned, well, I don't know. I may have auditioned for other plays, but the very first play I got cast in, uh, I imagine you can fill in the blank. Was uh, Man for All Season? No, one Man before wrong that. Wrong order. Yeah, wrong order. No, it was uh, it was One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, it's so long ago. It's the wrong yeah. order. Okay, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Right. Yeah, Renton okay. Civic Theater. First, you know, sort of a they pay. I, I remember being a kind of a sn not snob, but I had this idea that I would only do work that was paid. I wasn't going to do fringe theater. I was because I was yeah. I got. I got, you got in, out of grad school. You had just got out of grad time. school. I got into grad school late in, you know, it, uh, later than most. And I just felt a need to, to catch yeah, up. So, yeah. But they paid us like a hundred bucks for the whole run or something like that. And, <laughs> and that's where we met, right? You, uh, you, uh, you were yeah, that must probably, be right. what were you, 20, 21? You were a what kid. What year was that? 92. 92. I was, 92. 92. I was yeah. born in 71. So 22. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Uh, so buck. It's a young buck. Young Buck. So well, we like, did that show together. I think you had a you were a you know a smaller part. And I, I was got... Orderly Williams. Thank you very much. <laughs> you had a name. That's good. I had a name. I was an Orderly, and I had a name. I don't yeah. know if it's actually in the script. We made that up, but I was Orderly Williams. There you go. But yeah, that's where we met, and I think shortly thereafter, and I honestly forgot 
all about this. I mean, completely forgot about it until oh. you sent me the picture today. You forgot about Face of a Stranger? Face of a Stranger. So tell us, <laughs> tell, 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 briefly explain Face of a Stranger. Uh, Face of a Stranger was a short film back in the day, kids, back in the day, children. It wasn't, you couldn't just make movies on your phone. You had to like buy a bunch of film and it was expensive and it was a big deal. And people used to make short films to try to, you know, get gigs, get jobs as directors and writers. So this guy named John hired us both independently. We didn't know, you know, again, it happened three or four times. We worked together just completely independently. It was always Paul had the good role and I was like the young kid doing this little thing over here. <laughs> but uh, Face of a Stranger, I can't remember the plot exactly. It was something like, uh, you slept with my sister. I think there's something I kept saying over and over again. <laughs> you slept with Son my sister. Bitch. You slept with my sister. <laughs> and then I believe I, I punched you. I definitely you? punched you at some point. And we were, we were best friends and that was a big deal. I, yeah, I, I, I best ruined... friends and you slept with my sister. Yeah. And I remember being uh, very nervous when we did that especially when we shot, there was a scene up in some like condo overlooking Seattle. Do you remember that place? Oh yeah, really gorgeous nice place. place. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought like, I was only the second time, the only other time I'd been on film was that other little independent film about staring at the sun. That was also somebody that John knew. I can't remember, but I can't remember what that was called, but I was, you know, nervous, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, <laughs> back then I get, like I'm saying, we shot on film and those guys were learning what they were doing as well. So they were just like, there was just camera stands everywhere. There's like all this, like, and you know, you're, we only have like two takes because we're shooting on short ends and, you know. <laughs> and they were shooting on video. film, right? This wasn't, this wasn't video. This was film. This is 16 millimeter. Yeah. yeah. We on, well, yeah. it might've been 35, but I think it was 16. Yeah. And I remember. I saw uh, the camera. The picture. Yeah. I remember the same thing. I, I think I, it was an ad in The Stranger or something. I mean, it was, yeah. I don't think it I don't know if it was through our agent or not, but I think it was just something that we saw and, you know, somebody, yeah. was, and, and they were making, John had, I think, written the full screenplay for this, this film. And they had just enough money to shoot a couple scenes. And the scenes were, as you said, yeah, right. there is a, it, was a, it was a teaser. It was a, a showcase. Sizzle. showcase. Kind of, sizzle. Yeah, yeah, sizzle reel. <laughs> and so, yeah, let me, so you sent me these photos today. So let me share, oh let me share this where are we here can you see that okay yeah absolutely okay so that's exactly it we're in the we're in oh, somebody's that's that, set. that's that place right yeah that's the set and uh, that's john the director I mean, we were all kids right he was, oh, he yeah. was he, and steve rosen i, I remember steve steve. Rosen. yeah great guy i don't remember these guys but they were the people they hired to do the you know cinematography and all that and then here is you and me. <laughs> <laughs> I was a, a few pounds lighter back then, if I remember correctly. But you're wearing the same shirt, so that's I cool. Think, yeah, well, you know, I upgraded with a little pattern, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there we are. I was the moody, you oh, yeah. know, John's, John was writing that, that character that, you know, just, you know, the, the anti-hero who- Yeah, who can't you know, help himself, but sleep with my sister. <laughs> <laughs> and then so this was the scene i had one scene with <laughs> the woman who played your sister piper henry was her name um and then this was the big scene where you found out and then we yeah. we uh and then and here's there's a great shot here of yeah. you. <laughs> this is us that practicing. must have been rehearsing i think that must right, we're totally rehearsing yeah. yeah right you're just like whatever <laughs> <laughs> this and then, I'm be like this and then he's gonna be and then be like that okay <laughs> so there's that i, I and uh, if I, I have a feeling when people watch this i'm gonna get a lot of people going we have to see this movie and i'm gonna oh, tell geez, you right I now mean, that no I you don't. don't want that to ever see the light of day no nope. we can't it ain't gonna happen got it. it can't it can't be on youtube is it no it, it's i don't think so and uh but let's see, how do I get to some of these? Let's see if I can make this. Oh, I just, bigger. yeah, I just took a photo of the whole page. Sorry. That's okay. So there you are. They got the camera yeah. there. Uh, there you are again. Look at this. Half, is that look a 16 that millimeter? I think it is. Oh, man, you were such a kid. <laughs> you were probably like, you had to be 22, 23 right there. That was I couldn't even grow a mustache back then. <laughs> <I was like. laughs> and then. <laughs> Ah, he's so sexy. You're too yeah. sexy. What happened? What happened? Where we go? Yeah, the sexy. 
<laughs> oh my god crazy back when my my beard actually had color in it uh, <laughs> and then okay and then we did another play together i'll just zip through these before we start talking about phantasmagoria but we did a play called a man for all seasons that's me that playing. makes sense that that's the last thing because i think that's the last thing i did in seattle before i went to act 1994 actually. that's right so you went to act first and i remember i think i even i don't know i can't say that i helped you but i remember help you know i remember oh i meant doubt you helped me with my monologues yeah I we helped you. That, we, spent, sure, we yeah. spent time on your on your audition and stuff. yeah i don't necessarily remember that because i have a terrible memory but that seemed you would have been who would have done it you probably you know right, right. back then i, I had yeah. some clout in your in your eyes now i'm just a old, old dude that's on this <laughs> hey, that's the guy who had clout there he is <laughs> i played henry the eighth i am i am and i was senior chef Croesus attendant <laughs> that's <laughs> the motif so you, that's right. You went from orderly. I went from orderly to, Williams to senior chef Quise's attendant. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I went from orderly Williams to you slept with my sister. To senior chef Quise's attendant. Orderly to little brother to attendant. Yeah, there's a very uh, a fuzzy picture of the whole cast. There you are, right there. There I am. And if you right zoom there. in on that, there is also a guy named. I think he's there in the gray, sitting next to you. That's Troy Bindle. He. You oh, I remember Troy. Quite a bit. Oh, he does a lot of work, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's down here. I see him in LA. We, we went and knew each other. He actually did. He also takes uh, headshots uh, as a side gig. And he took my last headshots, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. I always liked that guy. I only, I only knew him during guy. that show, but I thought he was hilarious. We also have a really good cast. We had some good people in that. Yeah, show. yeah. He's, he recently had a small little bit on that new uh, winning time on HBO about the Lakers. What a he has a small little part on that. He plays this. He's uh he's there in the scene that uh Jason Siegel's character is introduced, like episode three or something. You should check okay. it out. I'll he's give a, her. I'll, I'll check it out. He's for like sure. a, he's a administrator of a school that Jason Siegel's character is. Teaching. Okay, you know, that's a, that's he's a, a terrible guy. show. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that show is so filled with with just just. Oh, but it's fun, fun, fun. It is. It is fun. Yeah, and that's all the stuff. That's all the stuff. So that's great. Um. And then you moved to you moved Francisco. to ACT, and then yeah. then spent. Let me stop the share here. And then spent um, how many years down there before moving to LA? Uh, well, I grant, uh, I went there in ninety three, ninety four, and I I moved in to LA in two thousand. Okay. I was there. Oh, okay. So I, I guess I miss. Yeah. So you, we only had like a one year crossover. Then when I was when I was in LA. Yeah, it wasn't long. I, it was basically I just showed up and slept on your couch a bunch and played some poker and and then you split, you know, it wasn't that long. I think yeah. that I, yeah, like I said, like a year, I barely just got established down there as far as the job and things like but that. Yeah, you know, but we hung out a lot, Steve. I remember, you know, I just moved there with with Gina back at, at, at the time. And, oh, back and in I, Seattle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, you and I spent, a, you know, I mean, all... Until you moved to ACT, I mean, we we hung out, man. We we, yeah. we did we did everything, you know. Was, I remember going to your like I said, going to your parents. We feel place like and, a jerk that we haven't remained as close. Oh, uh, me too. It's, it's no. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely blame you for it, but I I, I don't harbor too much resentment. So, <laughs> but uh, I, I remember going to your parents for some dinner. It was either Christmas or Thanksgiving or something. And what I remember was that, and we actually, I I. I've ad adopted this. Um, uh, there was always a post dinner walk around the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, that was really fun. We always, yeah, uh, it's a still a tradition for sure. I, in our I family. think it's, yeah. 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 We don't do yeah, it as religiously. Leads, leads we, the way. We always go for the walk afterwards. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, um, okay. So let's talk about Phantasmagoria. That was 1990. Four, five. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Fantas two again. How? What a weird connection. Well, that again, we have, yeah, right? that just blows my mind that it just keeps on like happening like that. That was the other thing people think, or we might think. I don't know what they think that uh, that that we had the same agents or we had some kind of common denominator or whatever, but we didn't. We yeah, just, it just that happened that yeah. way. Yeah. But you got this gig first. I don't remember you telling me too much about the film. So talk me through, if you can, just, just what you remember about, let's start about like the audition. When did you remember hearing about it? Was it something, I'm sure something Topo got you or who did, who were you with at the time, agent wise? I don't I, even know. Probably Topo. I, I can't remember exactly. I can yeah. barely remember Topo, honestly. Yeah. 
I don't have a very good memory uh, for that kind of stuff. I don't remember the audition process at all. Um, uh, it would have been through my agent. Uh, it was probably just another, you know, audition that he did. You know, he just kind of whatever. So I don't remember very well. But the shooting experience itself, I don't know where. We've never talked about this. I don't know where you shot Phantasmagoria too. But did you go down? You know, in Seattle. Yeah, so we did. We went so down to like Fresno. We went out. We were down by Yosemite, in like this really weird. So the whole experience was. And again, like I was 23, something like that, 24, and young guy had never been hired to go anywhere, you know, <laughs> right? So they flew us to Fresno and I had a rental car and I was down there for like a week or 10 days. I didn't shoot every day. I was just hanging out in this little town called Bass Lake and the, the shooting it was in this small little, it, it was a weird, like, I don't know if it was converted from something. It seemed like a legit shoot space. It seemed like a legit studio. I don't know if it was purpose built for that or not, but it was in the oddest place. And I don't know exactly what Sierra Online's thing was. They were from there originally and they had offices in Seattle and then they flew back and did that there. And obviously by the time they did the second one, they were in Seattle. Yeah. Um, but it was, uh, it was like everything about it. I like, you know, <laughs> I went to Yosemite and encountered a bear. I, you know, all these weird things happened while I was there to shoot this thing because it was in this odd place and I had nothing to do. And I had a rental car, just like, whatever, you know, driving. Oh, you have around. to tell me about the bear. What's, what's the bear story? Oh, well, I just brought that up because I like to tell the bear story. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually a long story. I won't tell the whole thing, but it was a day I had time off and I didn't have a full day. Well, I didn't get my act together in time to have a full day to do this. I just, you know, by, probably like noon, I left the house or whatever, left the hotel but I drove into Yosemite and I thought, well, I'm just going to go in there for the day. I'll probably pick a different day to do more exploring, but I'm half day. I'll just go in there, you know, right here. And I did this uh, trail called uh, two, two waterfalls, two, I don't know what it was, but you do like this two thing. And I'll make a short story. Sorry. I went up there and by the time I got halfway up, it started to get that dark and it was time to kind of go down. You don't want to yeah. keep going. So everybody's kind of going down. So I, I turn and I go down. I'm not prepared for any overnight. I'm wearing just whatever. I'm not prepared for anything. And as I started to come down, I come by this little bathroom area and there's a guy there who's like freaking out. He's like going freaking crazy, like just really agitated. And so I asked him what was wrong and he had lost his brother-in-law. Him, His wife and him had gotten in a fight and uh, and the wife had this brother who was uh, mentally handicapped, right? And so they got in a fight and the woman stormed off down the mountain and he didn't know if she took the brother with him or not, or if the brother was there with him. And the last time he saw the brother was in the bathroom. And so he's freaking out. And I immediately, once I, you know, see the areas, there's no brother, there's no brother here, you know? And so I have to talk this guy down off the mountain just to like, just like, dude, there's nothing we can do. We have to go down the mountain. This one has no cell phones, you know, like whatever, not in Yosemite. And you had to go down the mountain and get to a cell phone and get professionals. And maybe your wife and brother will be in the parking lot, you know? Right. 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 Get to the parking lot. No brother. Wife's there. She notes that there's no brother. The two of them go at it crazy. I've got to be separating them, right? The whole thing. It was like, you know, we get on a cell, there's a payphone there and the, get the Rangers out there. And they're like, boom, we're on it. I'll ch- cut to the end, sir, but it, the, the, he was found and safe. And they called me the next day and it was great. But it was this whole thing. And they, had, they came with this car and they're like, we only have room in the car for them too. Are you okay? I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'll just walk back, you know, because I don't know if you know the trailhead, but there's a bus that goes around and drops you off at these trailheads. You can't take your car in there. So I'm about a mile or so on this trail or this road. And you're know, like, you know, OK, everything's done. Everything's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking back. Of, they're going to get it. They're going to get search and rescue going and they just drive away. And I'm just like in Yosemite city boy. I'm a total city boy. And I'm in there and it's like, thankfully there's a full moon and I can kind of see stuff. But I have this mile walk or whatever, I don't know how far it is, but on this road with no street lights or anything, just the stars and the moon. And I'm already on the edge of my seat because I'm a city boy and every you know noise, I'm freaking out. And as I'm walking uh, back, you know, down the middle of the street, I start hearing these banging of pots and pans, right? And I'm getting towards this campsite up ahead. And my first thought is, look at these yahoos. Look at these, you know, jerks over here like banging pots and pans in the wilderness like a bunch of jerks making noise everybody's trying to have a nice time everybody's trying to camp why are you banging pots and pans and then i realized that they were driving a bear out of the campsite 
down the road towards me, banging pots and pans to get the bear out of the campsite. <laughs> and I'm like, why are you guys doing all the noise, man? You know, oh. oh, so this bear coming right at me. And he got, I don't know, 30 yards or something. And I ditched into the bushes, right? And just jumped into the bramble, like, you know. <laughs> and as the bear came by, you know, he interacts with humans all the time, I'm sure. You know, he's yeah. yogi. He just walked by, he lumbered by, he just was like, yeah, I see you. <laughs> I mean, my, my eyes are accustomed to the dark. Yeah, like, yeah, you're not hiding. I could totally eat you right now if I wanted to. No. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. If, I hadn't, if I hadn't just eaten these people's trash, <laughs> yeah, right. you'd, have, you'd have been dinner. <laughs> wow, man. Okay. So that's that happened a... while I was there. It was like wow. a whole thing. And yeah, so. I, I did so... get a call the next day that the guy was okay. Oh, that's good. So yeah, what I know is that Sierra Online, uh, Ken and Roberta Williams, and Roberta Williams was the woman who wrote yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Fantas. She didn't direct it, but um, she was the one of the owners of the company. And and when they, I think that's where they lived. Uh, and so when they started the company from scratch, they built it from there, and then they sort of took over that town. I guess, is it called Bass Lake? Is that where they were? I don't um, know the town's called that, but it's right on Bass Lake. Okay. Yeah, problem. I can't remember the town either. They've told me a number of times, but but the people listening will know what I'm talking about. But they that's where their headquarters were for a number of years. And when I think Fantas One was kind of the tail end before they made their mass move to mm -hmm. Seattle. Um, so yeah, that's where you guys made well, it that it's completely impractical for us to all shoot there like that yeah and i don't know why they cast a local seattle actors so they must have had some sort of they must have already had some they had a presence in seattle presence in seattle right yeah. and so you and v joy were the two i don't think i recognize any other act i'm, I'm playing the game with victoria right now by the way <laughs> she's really? Like me, I'd never ever played my game ever until just a couple of yeah. month, months ago. Well, I've never played Phantasmagoria. Uh, you should you should join us next Monday. Yeah, yeah I'll, <laughs> I come come hop on Zoom and join us for for some. Of, we, we get, did your character get killed? Uh, well, I think in certain iterations, maybe. Okay, there's something about uh, they. They just like find my body. I was disappointed I didn't get to do a death scene. Oh, like, okay. I'm, I'm, they find my body in the chimney or something. I don't okay. know. Okay. Right, well, we haven't oh, got no. there yet. But maybe we can, oh, it's in the middle of it. <laughs> but maybe we can, uh, if you're up for it, it'll be fun to have you join us for a, for a session or two. It's really fun. Yeah, we maybe. do it on. I've seen bits of it, you know, but I've never actually played the game. You know, well, you're going to watch some bits theory. of it today. Um, okay. uh, so, yeah, tell me what you remember about the shoot. And and you were in a big blue screen and all that, and there was no, it was a big, you know, you weren't. Uh, I remember it was a fun set. I remember that everybody had a pretty good attitude. It wasn't like some stressful time. Everybody was having a fun time. Uh, what else can I say? It was weird because you're, you know, that's, I've done other blue screen and motion cap stuff since then or whatever, but it's just an odd thing the first time you're in a blue screen situation you know it's just odd and you're uh okay all right Remember. so there you go that's you and oh, v, v joy lee and this was uh some of the stuff that you sent me today so thank you for sending that so uh, yeah tell me just whatever what, what what comes to mind so you got the potatoes here you guys are well this is our can site and i had to skin these these rabbits which were pretty nice bits of, uh, of uh, work, but somebody made these fake rabbits. They weren't real. Uh, they're, they're nicely made. Uh, and obviously I'm, I'm just totally goofing for the camera right now. That's not a real shot. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I recognize that goof. <laughs> Speaking of, there's another. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I've actually seen some of the footage of this before. There's a, you know, they put in a whole uh, log, you know, mound there and everything. It's I like got to see you guy. chopping wood. Yeah, I, I, we watched the scene the other day. And oh, you you're, did? You're out there chopping wood, man. You chopping wood, go. man. <laughs> I felt like I was conducting an orchestra there. I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's you and the and the ladies. Yeah, yeah. The seance. I think we just watched that scene as well. I have no recollection of that scene whatsoever. Well, it's most. It's very. It's pretty funny. You and V Joy have a pretty good uh, connection. You guys. Oh, uh, yeah. 
I call her V Joy. I think she just goes by Joy, but I know her professional name is V Joy Lee. Uh, I haven't seen her in forever. I'm going to talk to her in, in a couple of days. So I hear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a moment where she does, you guys have a seance and it's funny and you guys have some fun physical uh, shtick that you do. And then, and then she gets, you know, she gets uh, the calling and we find out some more stuff. Phantasmagorized? She gets phantasmagorized, exactly. Here's some more of your shots. This was just stuff that you got from, it, it's, it, you didn't want to oh, yeah. ruin the, the photos by taking them out of their sleeves. Those, those stupid photo albums where they were so cool when you thought about it, but now when yeah, you right? try to take it, it just rips the photo <laughs> off. Well, I don't do this anymore. I was keeping a scrapbook back when I was a kid. And I wish I'd done it more. It just kind of ends at like 94 and that's it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's the cat uh spaz i think they called it in the in the oh, game yeah and there you are funny story about those overalls i was told to bring overalls and they said make sure they weren't blue and i kind of forgot and i brought blue overalls and then unbeknownst to them and unbeknownst to the uh laundry mat there in bass lake i dyed those at the laundry mat i had no other choice i had nowhere else to go i was i felt terrible about it but i just dyed those like three times in black dye the day before because i didn't want to get in trouble with production because i didn't remember they said that <laughs> why are they asking you to bring your own costume for god's I sake know. i have no idea man it was the it was the early 90s <laughs> so just some great shots and yeah you really get a sense limitations is up on that laundry mat thing well but. it's funny as i'm talking to um <laughs> Tori, you know, Victoria, she has hardly any memories. And the more we talk about it, the, the reason being is that there's nothing to attach your memory to when it's all blue screen and you're just miming, right? You, yeah. There's, I mean, I got to do Phantasmagoria 2. At that point, they decided, oh, let's move away from blue screen and let's do it like a movie shoot. So I had the opposite experience where they had sets and we shot on location. And, and so I have very visual memories of all the places that we went to because they were real, but I, I can make, I can see why it would be hard to remember. Right. And I, you know? to, to that point, like even looking at these pictures, it's like the memory that gets jarred is almost the setup gets charred more. Like I look at it and I go, Oh, that's me behind the, I remember climbing up behind those logs, you know, like it's the, the physical setup that I remember more than the scene itself. Or, yeah. This is a great example right here. Right. So it's all yeah. this, and this is supposed to obviously outside and you're, yeah, I yeah. think this is where you're actually, we'll watch this scene in a second. I'm trying to it's poke just, a cat. I'm yeah. poking a cat with a stick or something, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. Fascinating. Look yeah. Look, <laughs> like, yeah, look at that. That's just, uh, mm -hmm. that, that is not a, 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 that is not a memory inducing set. Right. Right. And I don't, I can't remember the director really. I can't, I remember her getting in that setup. I remember that was something she was, uh, that's when she was in the hay. She fell through the, yeah, you guys got to the thing where you're at with your, your feet are there. Ah, right, we got that that earlier. Yeah, let's see if I can. Find that. That's great. Yeah, that makes so Look much at that sense. That rig, man. <laughs> oh, and then I'll show this. To, yeah, and you can see the monitor. So I guess you guys had this to see what would they actually would they actually project the image behind you so you get a no, sense of, no. no they didn't have that kind of technology <laughs> back then that was just seeing what the framing was like i think i don't think that was for us yeah haven't gotten to this yet but uh, we'll see <laughs> I, yeah i can't remember what that is either but just, that was a good picture i took <laughs> a good a good bloody bloody head um a few more oh and then i think let's see if i can shoot in here <clears throat> so this I believe is Roberta Williams was that yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, that Charles. I imagine that's your director right there. That's you doing some wood chopping. Yeah, yeah. My overall. Good picture, Steve. These are great. <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have kept up taking set pictures. I don't really do it at all anymore. Okay, and then here's some stuff, some behind the scenes stuff. Oh um, uh, yeah. Now, I think that might have been your makeup person. I remember Tori has talked about she was really cool and they, they got to be good friends. Um, that sounds reason. right. I don't know what this no hunting, that must have been some bar we would go to or something. Right. And I believe that is that, that's, I don't know. Who that, that, yeah, that's right. Is, that, is that Roberta? Yeah. Okay. And that's some of you guys hanging out. And I believe that Don and the, I think the, 
Don and Tori were a couple, or they became a couple on that set. Yeah. Have the you show, connected with him at all? I had an interview with him. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice guy. Very, yeah. uh, he's very, he's from Texas. He's got this very soft Southern kind of, he wrote a, he's an interesting guy. He's very, very eccentric. Um, oh, yeah. I like, I liked him. Um, uh, Is he still he, in the game? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so. I don't. I don't get the sense that he is. Um, he wrote a book based on a, a book of poems, or really uh, based on his from the character of Don. And yeah, he's he's from this character. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Other people. There's Tori, and yeah. So that's it. Is there one more? Oh, there's one more here. That's yeah. That's uh, oh yeah. That's right. Yeah, super cool. Cool. back to that <laughs> yeah so um so when you did the uh you did you shot the game you did your couple weeks was there ever any sense of uh you know did you did you keep an eye out for it for when it came out what was what was the expectation or was there ever any expectation that it would come to anything um i don't think i had the same kind of expectations that kind of go with that kind of thing where like you'd shoot a tv show and you're like i can't wait till it comes out because i don't think it really understood it you know like it was just this you know it was a very cutting edge thing at the time i don't know if it was the first time they used live actors in a in a game but it was close you know and so and i wasn't a gamer so to me i was just fascinated more by the blue screen experience and all of that and then it was kind of like oh it came out and i think i attracted enough to i got a couple of things too like a phantasmagoria uh book that you use to go through it if you want like a cheap book or whatever yeah, yeah. So i got that at some point so i must have been somewhat aware but i didn't play it or know anything about it and and nor did you think uh, that this was going to be um a career changer or uh you know that it was going to help you know get you going into the no i didn't i didn't feel like that at all well i was also kind of like it was at the time in my life where I was deciding to go to ACT and grad school and stuff and so it was kind of like oh this is just a job and then I'm going to go and be out of the game for a while and go to school and stuff so I wasn't really thinking about how it would help my career forward because in my mind my career was about to stall for a couple of years when I went to school right so, right the funny uh, thing is I got to grad school and there was a couple of guys there who were computer nerds who told you were like holy crap you were from phantasmagoria and they're like they couldn't believe that like they you know because they were really into the game and i, I was like ah, oh, all right <laughs> you know <laughs> well let's talk a little yeah that that's it's it's interesting because i i felt the same way as you like you know i my experience felt a little bit more like a real film just because of the way it was it was made and and i, I imagine I, it felt much more like a real thing yeah yeah, and, and I, I played the lead, so I did feel like, oh, I got this. You know, it was a, it was a really well-paying job, and I hadn't had a lot of film experience outside of Face of a Stranger, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, so it was a really great opportunity. And I remember thinking, oh, maybe this FMV, these full motion video games, are. It seems like they were about to take off, and ultimately, mm -hmm. it had like a very short. Um, it had a very short lifespan. It was too expensive to produce. And there was like three years where these games were made. And I think a few dozen of them were made. And then it just tanked and it went towards animation and, and all these other things. We're um, coming way back now. <laughs> but, uh, and I was able to pull scenes from the game to use for my reel, but then I never, that was it. You know, I just forgot all about it. And, uh, and I also just felt like if you compare them to movies, it's not as good, especially the, the blue screen stuff. It's just not, it doesn't, it will watch your scene in a minute, but it doesn't, it doesn't play well in and of itself, right? It's pretty cheesy. And, yeah. but what's weird, what I never knew because over the last, I mean, have you gotten any sense? Is, have you, have people reached out to you uh, about this? Has this ever no. been a, no, not at all? Mm -hmm. Well, these games have taken off and, and, oh, yeah. you know, in a, you know, not, not in you know again in a small corner of the world of people that love these types of games but there are youtube channels devoted to it there are people who have devoted their lives to chronicling all of what sierra online did people uh, yeah. the stories people have told about how these games kind of helped them through difficult times when they were kids 
um, just to kind of, it's, it's really kind of surprising. So well, having, I'm not surprised just in general. I think that's the power of medium. I mean, that's what we do it for, right? To yeah. affect people and have them have those things. I mean, I, I haven't had people say that to me about that particular job, but I, I love having people tell me that something I did help them during a time or that they, that just, they have a moment of an hour of entertainment during a shitty period of their lives or whatever, or being able to escape into a game. I'm, I'm not surprising that there's a pe bunch of people out there who are, who are, you know, making a, making us all remember it and let's go back to it, you know, and, and celebrate it. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. I think there's a there's a whole nostalgia factor that's happening right now, based on, of course, the cool. pandemic and everything else. And, right. uh, but yeah, but the one the thing I was leading to is that having only seen clips from these games, your game, my game, uh, grabbing clips. Now that I'm doing this this series, it it lives in this place that I've always saw it. And then when I finally played the the first my game, and now I'm mm -hmm. halfway through yours. It's a totally different experience. You actually, you know, it's not 3D, it's not, it's not virtual reality, but you get into this world. You are run, you get, you get to walk around this, the mansion. Uh, you get to look at every little thing. Every time you get a new chapter, something new happens. And this, you know, this experience just builds upon itself. And so I, for the first time, I really get it's still cheesy. It's still fun to laugh at and have a good time, but I really get why people love it so much or love these things so much it's a it's it's a it's been a fascinating experience so that said we won't be able to play the game but i do want to share a couple of scenes of my pal so talk to me a little bit about cyrus yeah i know you and i talked about <laughs> tell me about what 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 did they tell you about him what did you you know what were you doing with him uh well like I said, this was shortly before I decided to go to grad school. And the reason I decided that is because I needed to learn more about being an actor <laughs> because uh, I, I didn't know what I was doing as far as that goes. And uh, I felt like uh, really all I really felt like I brought to that thing was, um, and I joked at the time, everybody thought it was funny, but it was the truth really is I was doing a poor imitation of John Malkovich from My and Men. That was my goal, just to do kind of like, an overblown impersonation of him doing Lenny from My and Men. And I feel like I did a very good job of making an, a caricature that I should be ashamed of now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I achieved the goal of making a very broad caricature that um, I'm embarrassed of, certainly in the light of how we think about stuff nowadays. I don't think... Uh, uh, I would approach playing a character with mental illness the same way. I certainly would give it more respect. But, you know, it was a wacky video game and I was 23 years old. And in that sense, I feel proud of it in that regard. You know, I, I achieved what I was trying to do. I just learned now that maybe what I was trying to do isn't the way to approach it. You know, yeah, you know watching it, the one thing I'll say, you know, it's funny because I know that movie and, and there was a certain there are a couple moments watching you. I'm like going, Oh, he's doing Malkovich. He's doing, he's doing money. Totally. Yeah. Oh God. And I remember totally. that was a powerful movie and a powerful performance when that came out. I, I haven't seen it in years, but, but one thing I will say that you do is I don't feel like you're making fun of the character. I, I, I feel like it is broad. It's big, but I do feel like you're, um, you are not commenting on him. You are, that's how you're, you're reacting as that character. And it, it, it keeps it from feeling like, you know, a, hey, look at, look at me making fun of this type of, of person. I don't get that sense at all from it. Well, yeah. I'm glad you feel that way because um, I kind of figured that that's how it comes off now. Uh, so I'm glad and it, it, and it, again, it is broad and it, 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 it would. And again, you wouldn't do it that way now. Uh, and it's, yeah. Well, even, I mean, characters like that do exist, you know, in, in literature, Mice and Men is a good example. And it's not that to avoid, I'm not saying to avoid playing a character like that. It's about how you approach it. And I'd like to think Malkovich probably approached it differently than <laughs> I did. You, know? well, you approached, he approached trying to find how to be that character. You approached how to be like John Malkovich. He was doing character. an impression of Gary Sinise playing yeah. Lenny. <laughs> My, uh, I had an acting teacher who said, and I always loved this, and it was, he said, good acting is pretending and bad acting is pretending to pretend. 
And so he would make an example of like, if I'm pretend, if I'm a kid in a playground and I'm pretending to be, you know, uh, a pirate, I'm being a pirate. But yeah. if I'm pretending to be pretend, I'm like, you know, this is what a pirate looks like. Here's me right. doing this. You're, you're putting yeah. something on top of it yeah. as opposed yeah. to living in that world. And uh, so I think there is that maybe there was a little bit of pretending to pretend, you know, from a young actor who hadn't got his training yet. All that well, said, I also think, I mean, I do, if I remember back and I think about it and stuff, I mean, I think the key thing about Cyrus is that he's very earnest. And I think if you just focused on the earnest stuff, maybe that counteracts some of the broad. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Hey, everyone, I hope you're enjoying this interview. We'll get back to it in just a minute. But before we do, I want to take this moment to say, the only reason we are able to watch this right now is because of the generous support of my Patreon members. And the only way I can do my next interview is the generous support of my Patreon members. I would like you to be one of my generous Patreon members so that we can continue to do these interviews. My hope is to do one of these a week and maybe eventually even two of these a week. And we can cover more and more of these incredible artists who have created so many of your favorite games. So before we get back to the interview, just hop on Patreon real quick and, and sign up. Now go ahead, I'll wait. Patreon.com. <laughs> yeah, all good? Great. Now back to my interview. All right, well, let's take a look and see here. Hold on a all second, right. let me see. Let me... I've made all my apologies. <laughs> now all we right. can watch it. Here we go. So this is your introduction. I hope we don't go straight to a commercial. I think this is one of those ad. Ah, that'd be annoying. Yeah. I hope, well, let's make sure that I have sound. I don't, but I do now. Boom, boom. Okay, here we go. Look at the beautiful tree they gave you. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> and I think they tried to do a little jump scare here for us. They needed a little bit more of a musical. And Hello? <gasps> Is there somebody there? Oh, there's the music. And <laughs> ah! don't run, don't run. I, I, I won't hurt you. Oh, oh boy. It's very broad. I, I'm Cyrus. Me and Mom are living here. <laughs> this is where you wonder why you agreed to this. Oh, she that's she'd fallen right she had, now you need to make the decision whether you follow me or not. yeah you have to make a decision to follow you and there yeah. is a scene and i don't of, think you should <laughs> <laughs> so this is not me play but somebody has uh somebody right. I think has I've seen this youtube video of this and their whole yeah. video game so you have to click on all the places for her to go and she just sort of follows along Hell, oh wow that got loud yeah, she's stuck in the thing. That's what we saw in that blue thing. Oh, come on. You got to help Mom. Help! Help me! Oh, God. You grab my pants. Ma, you just grab my pants. I, I went and got that lady. Well, love those yeah, black I'm overalls, man. man. I'm stuck. I love help. that story. Somebody help me. It's a perfect example. I'm just staring at the sky here, blue screen. I mean, there's nothing there for me to yeah. look at. I'm just mm -hmm. grabbing my pants, staring at them. I'm just looking up. Just looking up. And Grabbing they, my pants. They put all that in there later. And then they, when they, uh, Iris, what happened? when they have her go up, we don't have to, oh, I think there's a little bit more for you here. And then I'll, I'll, I'll I won't make you watch too much. Why, 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 why through the floor? Why through the floor? I think it was a good idea. I didn't want to do it. Do what? I lived up there with that thing. The pony? Yeah. Why would you want to do that? Help! This hurts! Oh, she wanted to go up there. 
Oh, help her for crying out loud. <laughs> there are so many moments in this where it's just so slow. Like the, the whole build up before you came in and surprised her. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. There are so many moments like that where you're just like, okay, hey, come on, let's go. They weren't really, they weren't really taking a lot of, uh, putting a lot of energy into. And then if it didn't, if you didn't do anything, it just like loop. Like my character would go like, hey, come on. We gotta go. There's a Help scene. Her. There's a scene where oh here, let's watch you chopping some wood here. Here's another one. Oh, chopping wood. Oh, you're not chopping yet. Or are you? Dancing with the wood right now. Yeah. We call these fidgeters. You did some fidgeting. Hey, you stupid cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about to have it, George. <laughs> Stupid key cat. Yeah, it's like you're, 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 he had the mouse, you have the cat. <laughs> Cyrus? Cyrus, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. <laughs> you had a real cat there. That was real cat. What were you doing with my cat? Peter was not involved. I, 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 would, I would claim you did this all. That's, there's there John Malkovich. There that was Malkovich. What do you, that was straight out. I think that's an exact line, actually. What do you do? Straight doing? out. Mouse. Well, I was just playing with it, is all. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, there are more here. No, that's it. And then we go back. Uh, and then you do all sorts of things. There's one more moment, 155. I'm going to scoot ahead. 155, 43. Oh, went too far. This is, oh, here, I think this is when you're chopping wood. Let's see. Let's do that. Scoot ahead a little bit. There we go. There you go. Check out his wood chopping abilities. Boom. Uh, that... Cyrus, uh -huh. when I was in the oh, town, I could see a little building in the woods. I was wondering, have you seen it? Yeah. Well, can you show me the way? Uh, the trail's all washed out. Usually what I do, I just jump over it. But where is it, Cyrus? So there's a moment here that's hilarious. I wanna I wanna watch all this. Oh, oh okay. So right here. I'll show you. Come on. You, you run off and now you've disappeared. So in the game, you're gone. And it's, it's kind of fun because now there's all these places that you have to go, well, where the hell did he go? So, and I'm, I'm not a, you know, again, I'm, I, I'll just keep saying I'm not a gamer. So I, Tori and I are like, we don't, we still haven't figured out where everything is. Like, you know, if you go right, does it go here? And if you go here, we're still a little bit lost when, when we try to navigate the grounds. So we spent probably 20 minutes trying to find you. And, and it was, there's a chat going on during you know there's like a live chat and all the people who played this game and don't like at the back of their hands and i wasn't watching it because it's too hard to watch just the chat. yelling at you but when i watched uh, the playback it's like left left no go left go go beyond left 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 and then i would go you're the wrong left, way you're on the left. Yeah, then they go right right go right go right go right <laughs> turn around turn around it was so funny cold 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 so cold you're freezing you're freezing cold. <laughs> so let's see we get to here we go they're, they're, this is the spot that they find you I just keep putting my glasses back. Yeah. It's just a, is it just reading for you? Is it just No, reading? no, but I keep the, the light. Is it, yeah. It's annoying for the people. Oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you. I'm sorry, Cyrus. I tried to hurry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, see? There it is. Just like I told you. Come on. Don't you. And you do a big jump. Oh, oh yeah. That's pretty good. Match that. Oh, I don't know, Cyrus. Looks kind of dangerous. Is there another way? And then no. you have to decide to basically push the tree down so she can can go uh. over it. So yeah, there you go. So what's it like watching this after all? This is the first time you've probably watched any of this stuff. I'm so glad you let me do all my disclaimers ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it is a different period in my life, mm. let's say. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I'm excited to talk about, you know, I, I got a chance to... Uh, you know, oh, and I want to spend some time looking at your, the stuff you've been doing now. I, I'm, I, I watched your reels and, and man, you're doing some really great work, man. It's really, it's really fun. Oh. To, it's fun to see. And I, I imagine, I know that, you know, it's, it's, 
if you, you know, I know that it's the struggle that you, you know, just being an actor, you always want to be doing more, but, um, you know, when you get a chance to look back a little bit and when I get a chance, I haven't seen you in a long time and I get to see the stuff that, that you've done and I get to see you pop up on TV. It's, it's really a, it's a real treat. You know? Oh, one thing we have to talk about a little bit, um, is, well, uh, fiance. Oh, <laughs> you know, that could be a whole different story, but I, That's I, I a whole other podcast, I'm sure. Absolutely. But I think it's worth, <laughs> so, so this had to be right around. We're coming up on the 20 year, it was 2002, I believe, was Big Fat. Yeah, so I... Yeah, 2023 January, uh, 2003 January is when it aired. So we were probably shooting it right around now, 20 years ago. Okay, or so... A few months, but yeah. So you, tell me, tell me... Uh, so Steve uh, starred in a TV show for Fox, I think. Fox, yeah. Uh, back in the day called My Big Fat Obnoxious Fiancé. Correct. And it was a uh, reality TV show that was a staged reality TV show. So tell me, tell me the, tell me the uh, scenario and how, what, what, what was the? Well, it's a convoluted scenario. This is the most difficult thing I always have to explain to people who haven't seen the show. It was like a double joke. You have to remember this is back before we had all this sophisticated, you know, reality TV where there's whatever, it's just everything thrown against the wall. But back then, like they, it was all kind of new and different and we were trying to uh, do so. We were almost like, it was like a hidden camera show that in a weird way sort of spoofed some other reality show, but then took it seriously, I guess you could say. So what the setup was, was that they took a woman uh, who was a regular person and they sequestered her. They told her and her family, she was gonna go be on a bachelor kind of show, right? And they sequestered her for two weeks and at the end of the two weeks, they brought her in. They said, okay, here's the real deal. You're not going to be on a bachelor type show. We're going to have to convince your family that you went on a bachelor type show and you fell in love with the guy that you met on that show. Because that had just happened on The Bachelor. They just had this big wedding thing with Ryan and Tristan or whatever the hell, you know? And so they're kind of spoofing that. So that whole idea is that she thought I had also been sequestered for two weeks and I was also some schmo. And so the setup was the two of us meet and we go like, boom, starting today, we have to convince our families that we fell in love on the show and we're going to get married in like a week. And so her real life family came out. My fake family full of improvisers was there and we interacted with them almost like this. What was the goal? So what, 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 how, would, how were the two, her and your doppelganger, what were you told was the end game? Right. So we believe that the setup was, I never believed this, but I had to pretend like I believed it, was that if the two of us uh, made it all the way through the wedding ceremony without our families collapsing and we succeeded to do it, we would each individually uh, get half a million dollars and our family would get half a million dollars. Um, and uh, so our goal was to reach that goal. Uh, so she thought the two of us were on the same page trying to go down that road. I, however, was a plant who was making that uh, very difficult by being very obnoxious and annoying and fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you suffer for your art, man. <laughs> and so I was a plant. And so basically the, the, her goal was to get to the end of the thing. And my goal was to uh, beat her up just enough, not physically, but I mean, you know, uh, reality TV wise, uh, enough that uh, she could still achieve the goal, but have it be very difficult for her. So that was probably the most fascinating thing about it was there was scenes that we didn't do and ideas that didn't happen because we're always trying to keep them right on the edge of if they collapsed, we didn't have a show. They had to succeed, you know what I mean? So it was this thing, but yeah, it was a weird, weird. And what a, uh, what a mind game you had to go through too, because you're and I remember talking to you about this either both before you took the job and, and as you know, I know you had to be sworn to secrecy, but I remember it was a, it was a real struggle for you to put yourself in a position where you were, you know, well, it, got, it got weird. It got weird at times, you know, because we went, you know, we went far to make it hard on them. You know, it's an ugly thing. I, I don't, I'm not a fan of reality TV. I don't really watch it. It was one of those things where I took the gig, but I don't, 
it's another thing I don't feel super strongly, you know, <laughs> you know like I feel really good about, you know, but it was, uh, I felt like I was using my powers for evil in a weird way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, ultimately, uh, the goal is to entertain people. And yeah. if people are happy, you know, I so I, I have a mixed feeling about it because I have, you know, that I feel like it's a weird gig. It wasn't what I set out to do in my career. Uh, but then subsequently, I know that different people, it had impact, like we were talking about early, you know, earlier, people say, wow, that was something that was really great entertainment for me while I was in the hospital doing this or whatever, you know, and so you yeah. just go, all right, you know, people are happy, but it's a strange, it was a strange thing. It got pretty bleak at times where we pushed them pretty far and it was like they were going to collapse and the other actors, my other improv people were kind of like, this is too far, we can't do it. And then we had to like really focus and go like, we have to get to the end because the end is, we knew the whole goal was for them to win. And she did. She got half a million dollars. Her family had half a million dollars. The actors did not get half a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the actors largely got screwed because they told them I was going to help. So, so the, the reality was <laughs> you guys getting screwed. They were putting one over on you in the first place. Uh, no, for sure. For sure. I was in on it, in on it, but there was aspects that were kept away from me for sure. Right. Like when we, when we were shooting it, it wasn't big fat obnoxious fiance. It was whirlwind wedding. Oh, we're doing whirlwind wedding. I didn't know it was called Big Thought of Max's fiance until I was home in Seattle walking through a grocery store Are you at kidding? Christmas time. And, and there was like an ad for an like audio, a radio ad. Big Thought of Max, what is that? And it's, someone, it's like a whole, so like they didn't tell me that kind of thing. You know, like I knew I was being told to be obnoxious. You know, that obviously was the goal, but oh, they didn't tell you that. And just different, I mean, I don't want to, you yeah. know, it's the industry. Yeah. I'm not running down anybody in particular. This is how the industry works. You know, yeah. where they, they string me. I mean, I did, I got paid a decent amount of money. I'm not saying I got completely screwed, but I didn't get no half million dollars, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, there's this, they have you on the fish, you know, oh yeah. So you wake up at four in the morning <laughs> and you do all these drive time radio, you know, been and said, been and Tim in the morning in Miami. And like, we've got big time marches, you know, like you don't get paid for any of that. You just drag your ass out at four in the morning and go do that in a soundstage. And the whole time it's like, don't, you know, they're going to take care of you. You're going to get a series on Fox out of this. And, and then as soon as you're at that point, like the president of Fox leaves and a new person comes in and they don't know you from Adam and they don't want you to succeed because you're the last guy's person, you know, and yeah, it's like, whatever. That's Hollywood every day, man. <laughs> every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> Yeah. And I recall, do, do I recall correctly that you ended up becoming, I remember you saying how cool she and her family were as, as people and that you kind of got close to them near the, after it was all over and you were doing the press and stuff for it. Well, a little Is bit, that... I wouldn't say that we got close. We had a couple of nice moments where, you know, it was a very big shock for them that I wasn't who I was, yeah. who I said I was, you know, so during the, during the show, it was required for me to con them. And part of conning them is, you know, I, I was kind of friendly with them on the show as far as my character could be, but like, you know, you, you, it's a con. And when yeah. the con's over, they feel hurt, you yeah. know, naturally just even forget about the show and whatever feeling it's emotional. Like, just, you feel con, you got con, you know? Yeah. And, and I, and they didn't know who I was for real because I had presented myself and then they didn't get a chance to know me for real because you're... it was over and we we're moving on. Yeah. And so then next thing, uh, you know, I did do some press stuff. I was able to, you know, go on, uh, I went on Letterman and, and Leno and I did the view and all that stuff. And during that time, the, it all timed out right when the show was about to, uh, have its finale. So I was on Letterman the night before the finale aired or whatever. And I, I got a phone call the next day. That's probably what you're referring to from the father of her, Randy's dad, who's on the show. He called me the next day because uh, he didn't know who I was. So he was very nervous. I was going to go on Letterman and just go like, yeah, they're a bunch of idiots. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I went on and I kind of sort of, I don't think I defended them, but David kind of said, David, who's my friend, David, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> you know, Dave, you know, Dave. Okay. Uh, he had kind of made some comments and I kind of said, well, no, no, they aren't idiots. They, we put them in a pressure you know, situation and we, you know, we, we created, you know, so I, he was just, uh, uh, he was happy that I didn't put just them much them. idiots, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So we, we had a little bit of a thing there. And then uh, my ex-wife and I had uh, 
uh, Randy over for dinner a couple of times and stuff like that. But even that was, uh, we got along friendly in that regard, but we didn't really keep touch because yeah. really, you know, the only thing we really had in common was that show. Yeah, yeah the you foundation know, was, was not, the foundation was not a good, uh, strong uh, foundation. Yeah, too. Yeah, too and it's kind of like, well, you know, we can yeah. talk about that. Hey, remember that time I totally fooled <laughs> you and made you feel stupid? Yeah. Well, you've been, I'm, I'm going to share your, uh, I, I, I'm just going to pop onto your website here, oh, which, is, which is great. Oh, vanity time. And vanity been, time. Yeah. And you've done so much. And so um, here's what I'd like to do, because I know that I'm going to get tagged um, copyright stuff. So I'm going to start by just showing some of the photos that you have. And we could talk okay. about the, the stuff. And then we're going to watch, essentially, we're going to watch your comedy reel. And we'll stop through that uh, and talk a little bit about that. If if they allow you. If they allow, they'll allow it. I'll either get, so it's a couple of things. I'll, they'll tag it and I can say, hey, this is fair use. We're not we're not making money off of your thing. Yeah. Well, or they're just going to say no, in which case they'll just extract those image, those, those scenes, in which case I'll just go ahead and put your your uh, uh, website in, in the YouTube chat so people can find it themselves. But so let's do this first and uh, just kind of talk me through what you see here. Um, so here we former go. Former SAG president Al Rosenstein. Oh really? President of SAG after SAG for many years, back in the day when it's kind of some controversy around him and stuff but yeah this is um shameless uh played an attorney my mustache and i played an attorney yeah sure did <laughs> that's that's when the mustache started getting you some work right <laughs> oh this is oh we were deep into my mustache career by now oh, so. let's see if i can get this thing on here we uh do this there we go hi burrell that's, that's the first uh, one all right all right come family. on oh. there we go i guess it's just going to pop through if i if i can pause it Ah. scorpion geico commercial this one's hilarious what's that from uh that's from a show that didn't last long on showtime unfortunately oh <laughs> dang it i want to stop it's not letting me stop you all right let me this is hilarious ah how do i go back you that mustache oh no mustache there your your website is not letting me pause there's a pause button i'm sorry i don't i don't know how that works uh-huh all right. Well, let's let's sit there. So this is community. Hilarious scene. That yep, between, community. What's that from? This is from a commercial for okay. uh, with the guy from Hamilton. That's Modern from Family. Gray, or from Modern Family. That's from Bones. Modern Family. Modern Family. Uh, Grey's Anatomy. That's a great shot. <laughs> That's a commercial for uh, Uber. That's that same show. It's called I'm Dying Up Here. That's, uh, that's from Scorpion. That was you with Robert, the guy Geico, from the Terminator 2 Terminator, guy. Grey's Anatomy. Shaquille O'Neal. You got to hang with Shaq. Nine, yeah. Ring, ring, phones, Grey's Anatomy. More, more, uh, yeah. modern family. Oh, that's great. That's a commercial for underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that's from Long, Longmire. Okay. There you go. The mustache is doing some good work for you there. <laughs> and you still get more without the mustache. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Okay. So it's just a cycle. There's yeah, other no, things. Like that's all, all I right. have photos of. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, how, how are things going right now? How, how's the, I mean, I'm sure, uh, well, has, kind of has COVID up. been good for the career, or bad for the career? What's the, some people. Well, I was fortunate a little bit on COVID just because I had some commercials that I shot before COVID that ended up running longer because of COVID and their inability to shoot more photo, more commercials. So, I mean, in that little sense, it was somewhat okay for me. I'm, you know, not very good for a lot of my friends. Uh, very bad time, actually. But uh, overall, uh, coming back from COVID, things are starting to pick up a little bit. Um, you know, I just, I did a commercial recently that didn't run very long, but it was there and, you know, some things come back up. I actually recently, uh, recovering from a minor surgery on my spine. So I was kind of out of the game for a little while. That, well, you only told me a little bit about this. Oh, my neck. dude. Like I had a hesitant, you know, ah, no, I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Things are good. I mean, it's, I feel like I'm at a place in my career, uh, where I obviously want to work more where everybody does all the time. And, but, um, I've, 
you know, I, I'm kind of uh, known, I don't mean by the public necessarily, but by some people in the industry and, and I, I kind of reached a weird place. I guess it happens naturally if you stay here long enough where people sort of are happy you're, you're around. <laughs> and, uh, glad to have you show up. And, uh, and I've been here long enough to have a really great community of, of fellow actors and friends. And it's, it's been good. It's a, I'm in an all right time. You know, I'm not done with you know, That's great. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end the way we began with. I have ten more questions for you. Okay. And then we're gonna watch this your comedy reel, and we can stop and talk through that. But we'll just we'll see if that gets past the censors later on. But we don't have to do that. So, all right. Here's my last ten questions for you, Steve. Um, what was the last book that you read? Uh, Man in the Van. I believe was the last book I wrote. It's yeah. by uh, 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 the lead singer of the Mountain Goats, John Darnell. Oh he yeah, wrote, yeah. He wrote he wrote Man in the Van. He wrote another book recently. I picked it up. I haven't read it yet though. I don't think I have it. I'm like looking off somewhere in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's a bookcase over there. I know it. Uh, uh, what was the last movie you watched? Doctor. Um, last movie I watched. Shoot. I probably watched something I've been, you know, during the, it's embarrassing, not embarrassing, but it's kind of a funny, during my time with this uh, surgery uh, thing, which was, don't know when to get into it, no big deal, but I had a bunch of time just sitting on my butt, and I have never uh, been, like, into the Marvel movie, I've never watched the Marvel movie, so I watched, like, 27 Marvel movies oh, well, like, there you go. in a row, you know, starting with Iron Man, they have it listed there on the Disney thing, where they, in the storyline order. Yeah. You so, did I mean, it. I don't know if that's the last movie, I, but I've watched about 800 hours of Marvel <laughs> movies recently and I'm and, done. I don't and, need to see the new Doctor Strange thing or I'm good. I'm good for a while. Did, does it, does it, uh, well, you stayed with it. So clearly it was, it was working for you. Uh, for I was on a lot of painkillers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun for that, yeah. for what it is, you know, right. when you have nothing else to do and you're just trying to be in Again, it's all comes down to just entertainment, you know? What's fascinating to me, those, those, you know, I've met, my brother is totally, a, a, he grew up reading comic books and he knew all those people. And so even now he just loves, he, he, he you know, he loves seeing all the references of such and such that shows up. He, he, he you know, it, it connects with his childhood, his nostalgia, his, and he loves what they're doing with it. I didn't. And so what I see is the same formula over and over and over again. It becomes more evident when you watch them in a row. I'll bet. So sure. it never changes. So like within that formula, you know, they do different things. And some of the movies like Ragnarok is really fun and there's yeah. some great stuff. And, but, and I've only seen maybe five of them, but it's like, you know, even my son would be like, okay, there's going to be a big fight. And we think he's going to lose, but he's going to win. And it's just, you know, you can only do that so many times where it just get to me. It just. Well, someone uh, else has an Iron Man suit now. Yeah, right. right. Sure. He has an Iron Man suit. Sure. <laughs> you have an Iron Man. Hey, you want an Iron Man suit? Sure. Yeah. I have an it, Iron Man suit it's now. funny because was it Coppola or one of the or Scorsese kind of talked about it not being oh, right. real cinema. And they got, they got, how yeah, dare right. you say this is well, a People real. love them, you know? Yeah. And again, it, whatever, again, it just comes down to entertaining. Entertaining is key to me. That's the goal. Yeah. And if people are entertained by it, but I just feel like it's it gets really old really fast. You yeah. Know, for me. But I'm not, I, as I've gotten older, I've kind of been a slower guy in general. I prefer a slower pacing. I ensure, you know, I really like Barry on, 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 on HBO. There's, there's violence and there's there's stuff that's big explosions and fun every once in a while. Have you watched Barry? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. The pacing, the pacing is more my speed. You know, <laughs> like that. I like that kind of pacing. You know, Ozark. That kind of pacing is where I'm. Right, at. right. Then well, we go back to the video games. Like I can't do the shooters. It's too much. Why are you all trying to kill me constantly? <laughs> It's too much. No, it's too Single much. person shooting. Like, God damn. <laughs> you know, I want to be able to like, hey man, what's going on over here? Hey, well, I want to. I want to feel. I want to feel a rock. I want to feel a rock. I want to feel a rock and just be like, whoa, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, last album you listened to. I know we don't listen to albums. Do you do vinyl or are you listening to your? Oh, Spotify? I'm I'm listening to digital. I have vinyl. I'm looking over here. So the bookcase is over here and my vinyl is over there. Yeah. I never listened to it, but it is over there. 
uh boy i tell you i just listen to the same music over and over again I, earlier today i was listening to uh live in london leonard cohen that's probably one of my favorite you've been a leonard cohen fan since the middle day one day, man. Day, day day one. Yeah. i can't yeah, you stop got, him you actually turned me on to him i, I, remember. I turned a lot of people on to leonard cohen i'm yeah. proud to say yeah uh well, so yeah what's your favorite type of foreign food uh sushi nice what kitchen appliance do you use every day coffee maker <laughs> okay good enough that kitchen well, appliance. That works. are you microwave a, are you clean or a messy person i am a tight i tidy but things are like i don't deep clean very well i have to rely on uh either a paid people or, or people that i live with <laughs> I, I, I keep things very good i'm a good dishwasher and and resetting the pillows on the couch guy uh, but when it comes to like deep cleaning, yeah. it's like, you know, here's that. Right. We, we, we're, we're, on the, we're on the same page. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm exactly that person. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Uh, I've become a morning person. I've become yeah. a morning person. I really enjoy uh, my, my partner, my girlfriend. She, she sleeps in longer than me. And I, I kind of enjoy it. I, I like to get up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, you know, and check out the news. And I agree. Know, it's like uh, for a walk. all these years of like, my wife's a morning person and I'm, I'm getting, I had to become one having kids, but you know, you just, there's a certain point back in the day, you were doing theater, you were going out, you were engaging, you were partying, you were, you know, it was all about all the artistic stuff. And so those late nights were very active, but then you get older and you're like just sitting around watching TV late at night and everyone else is in bed. And, but waking up, you're like, you've got this, all this new energy of the day. I, it's so yeah. much, it's so much better to yeah. make yeah, the switch. Totally. Totally. Uh, for sure. <laughs> is your glass half full or half empty? Are you? Oh, it's half full. It's half full. I think it has to be. If it's half empty, I would have been out of the business a long time ago. I mean, the, this entire town is run on on hope and optimism, <laughs> and on, on, on just the, on on. Uh, and what am i trying to sometimes say sometimes dreams, dreams that don't come true you know right right exactly that's what the whole you have to be completely living in just a, a suspended disbelief at all times all right my last two questions what's your proudest accomplishment wow it's getting deeper proudest accomplishment i mean being it's got, it sounds, I can't even, being, being where I am now, I mean, honestly, getting to a point in my career where I finally, even if the work isn't good, even the work isn't plentiful, when I do it, I feel confident and relaxed and in place that I feel like this is where I, I mean, belong. I've always felt like I always belong there, but it takes a while to get to that point where it's like, I am, this is what I am and do, yeah. you know, That's and great. Think it's, it feels very good to be there. I wish I worked more, but doesn't matter in a weird way it's, it's who i am it's what i am and you, you found the balance too you found that other thing with your woodworking and such i mean I, that was the one thing i never had i only yeah. I, I only have this now partly because i you know i i'm pretty much out of the acting game I've, i do a play every once in a while but um you know for the first time in my life i have complete control over my creative projects and i don't have mm -hmm. that thing that you have with woodworking but i but I always put so much energy into other people making the decision of whether I could work or not. And I never yes. had that other thing to kind of balance that. And so it was a real, it really messed with me as it does so many people. But now, you know, being able to, you know, have something else I can go to that's mine. And for me, it's in the more in the creative realm. I do this, this yeah. project called Letters Aloud and I have a, uh, you know, some stuff that I, I do, but I've always admired, you know, the type of things that you're able to do. I've seen some of the work that you've done with your, your woodworking and that just must be a real, a real wonderful counterbalance to. It is. I unfortunately can't do any right now. Uh, I lost my, my woodworking shop straight out of, well, straight out of, you know, the musical rent, you know, it's a, the owner of the building had a fight with the manager and he took all the money and disappeared into Mexico and all the artists got kicked out, you know? So we all got, we all got booted. Last Shoot. Time. So now you got to find a new space. I, I'm, in, I'm in a dead man's zone, but I am been uh, writing a lot lately and it's kind of similar, like on the same vein of what you're talking about. You know, I have a writing partner and we're working on a project that 
we're very proud of. And, and the thing that's so great about it is we don't give a shit if it ever gets made, you know, like we're really, uh, we're not writing to anybody else's specs. We're writing something that we really like. And we know that it has a limited audience and we don't care. And we're keeping the budget really low. So if we ever did make it and only be a limited audience, that's okay. You know, and it, it and it's the most freeing, like what you were saying about your, what you're doing, you know, it, when you have full control over it, you know, and you're on the same page, I have a writing partner on the same page, you know, it is almost more fulfilling than, you know, actually. Man, I, I got, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I, first of all, I want to say okay. that, that you wrote a screenplay a long time ago that, that I have always it's stuck with me. It's uh, you wrote, uh, and you can tell it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to you know, sh share too much about. It. I'm not sure where it's at. But you wrote a screenplay about a a heartbroken guy killing Cupid. Yeah, killing Cupid. And yeah, the, yeah. The, the thing I, I don't is, want to talk about it too much. It's still something I want to mess with a little bit. And the thing I'm working on now steals from it a little bit. Okay. Oh, but it's it's bit. it was such a wonderful. It's just this club. Of, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll keep it from. Well, I mean, it's just basically a broken-hearted guy gets kidnapped by a secret society of guys who have all been through that, and now as a public service, almost like pick out guys who are screwed up, and they just like boom, we're gonna we're gonna fix you. We got a system, and here it is, you know. And it, it's not a very yeah, good it's, system, actually, and you know whatever. You're right, and it's like yeah, it's, it's completely uh, dysfunctional and everything. But it's it's fun. It was funny as hell. I remember. I, I remember you you had you, you tried. You know, I'm, I'm sure that there's it's gone through all kinds of iterations and and such. But I, you you are a funny guy, and I can see. Oh, I would love to see what you're doing next. But yeah, to, to speak to what you just said, a couple of years ago, you know. I, you know, I, I gave up acting, you know, I have two kids and, and I was working a lot here in Seattle and, um, but the, the funding, you know, I was making less, you know, the theaters were paying less than they did two years ago. I was getting, you know, I'm getting better parts and at the same theater, but they're, they don't have as much money to pay you. And, and joint so productions, they have to go down to Marin theater because you have to save money by doing joint production. Totally. Yeah. So it just was, it was unsustainable and we were, we're about to have our second, our second kid. And so I ended up getting this, this job that I was very grateful for where I'm working in uh, education and doing public assemblies for elementary school kids, positive behavior stuff. But it, and it, but it was a lot of travel. And so it meant I couldn't do that stuff anymore. And so after a couple of years and, you know, just parental, exhaustion and feeling not like you're doing anything. I had this moment where I, I was in DC and I saw some, some play, it was awful. And, I, and, and all these, and I just had this moment of like, no one is writing comedy like on TV. They are, but no one's writing comedic plays. They're writing issue plays that have, mm. have humor in them. Or you have a Martin McDonough who writes black comedy, which I think is great stuff. But no one's writing just good old fashioned comedy for the sake of comedy. And so I just thought, all right, I'm not a writer. I don't know how to start from scratch, but one of my favorite plays is Much Ado About Nothing. So mm -hmm. I know that play like the back of my hand. I've done it a bunch of times. So I'm going to just have that. I'm going to have the play over here on this side of my screen. And then I'm going to just write a modern day version of Much Ado About Nothing. And I'm just going to do it for me. And I just would say, oh, the kids would go to bed at nine. <clears throat> my wife goes to bed kind of early. So from like nine to, midnight every night it was just me transcribing it and then turning it into my own thing and i spent three or four months just giggling and by myself with the people i was creating and turning this person into this person and just yeah. and i you know it had a workshop and it had a couple of readings and it, they went really well and then i thought you know the next thing is to send this out and to try to pitch it but i'm not even interested in that. i feel like i got everything i needed how, and this is the first time this ever happened in my life that the process was all I needed. I didn't care so much about, look at this, look at this, watch this, please produce this. I got so much out of just doing it, you know, and I wish I had known that a little earlier in my, in my career, you know? Well, we, we, don't we all, I mean, I feel like that's the lesson you, you can't learn until you've done it for a while and been lived long enough to realize it, you know, I mean, that's kind of what I was saying earlier to get to a point where, I understand, you know, and, and you have that fluidity and, and it feels, 
you know, I get what you're saying about the writing. I know there's times where every script I've ever uh, tried to write, you know, there's, there's a moment where I'm just by myself, just giggling my butt off, like, you know, uh, and just going like, and you know, you've got to revise it. You know, this isn't going to work out in the long run. You know, this is going to need tightening or whatever, but in the moment you're writing stuff, you know, you're going to cut later, but it's hilarious and you're having fun and you're just going and you're riffing and your girlfriend's like, what are you doing in there? And you're like, I'm writing the worst screenplay ever. It's fantastic. You know? And, and that's, yeah. Yeah. And I also think that, I think that, I don't know about your experience, but in LA, you know, you spend all this time, like I said earlier, hope, 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 and yeah, I'm going to write this screenplay. I want to get it made. And that wall starts to become so annoying that you keep bumping up against that part of you, it, 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 you, it, that becomes a catalyst for you to figure out that if I just write it for myself and enjoy the actual process of writing, I'm going to yeah. get a lot out of this, even if I never, you know, get it to be on. There, yeah. And know, if the, if the pro there maybe. should be some semblance of like, I feel like I did the opposite where I just put it in a folder and I, and I just, you know, broke it out recently. I'm like, well, I probably, you know, I, I, it's, I still like it and I, I should probably put some energy into reaching out to people but but yeah it's like find the right balance between like okay you know have a system in place where you're going to get it out you're going to just mm -hmm. have it go out there and maybe someone will find it and take it but but that's not the point the point is to keep creating i don't know it's uh, i don't know how to do that thing i've given up over mm -hmm. i don't have a representation for literature yeah. my, i don't have a lit agent i don't even try like my greg and i my writing partner joke about like well, what are we how are we going to do with this when we finish and it's like well we have some people we can hand it off to you know yeah. that can maybe just because we've been in the business long enough you do know, a zoom that, reading yeah i mean i don't i mean you know I, I i i would be shocked if it ever got made outside of me you know climbing this incredible mountain to get yeah. it made and i don't know that that's what i do i mean yeah. that's that's the thing i mean people it's funny there's so many people who make their own content now with all these TikToks or whatever i sound so old with all the TikToks and the <laughs> rock and roll music <laughs> <laughs> but uh i don't even know where i was gonna go i made a joke and i lost my train of thought uh content just the sense oh, that, that, that people always assume that if you're an actor it means that you're also a writer and a director and everything else and it's like well no i mean i'm an actor i trained to be an actor you know writing and all that is fun and i kind of can call myself that because i've done enough of it but i, I don't really think of myself as that and, it, yeah. and since i don't think of myself as that i'm not trying to get my scripts out there necessarily it's like a weird thing i should i mean I, there should be part of me that has that uh impetus but i i just uh, it's more about um how many amazing things are out there right that people have created that will never be seen because there's no access to it or no if, yeah yeah that's, that's a kind of mind-blowing to think about that's a that, big right? point and people also uh, you know, I think you've been in Hollywood, you think you get here you know, long enough, you that that thought process you just had that kernel of thought translates to the entire industry. And you sit there and go like, I know more actors that are better or as good as the people who are winning Oscars, you know, I mean, literally, not jokingly, like, yeah. literally, I know actors who are better than those who are winning Oscar. And I don't mean to be a competition, like this should be him instead of them. I'm just saying that, like, there's a lot of content, be it written or be it performance ability or be it anything that is, you're just never gonna see the light of day, you know, cause there's just not enough jobs and there's yeah. too many talented people. Like I, I know so many talented people who are far more talented than I am who work less than I do, you yeah. know? And it's yeah. just the way it is. It's such and a so strange. I don't get really, I mean, if somebody wanted to give me an award, I'd take it, but I don't really watch the Academy Awards and stuff and everything because it just changed at some point in my life where I just started to go like, I don't go like, oh, you know, yeah. Brad Pitt. Isn't that weird? We used you to know. like, I remember like you know, being a kid, of course, you were a professional as a kid, but I was so like, oh, when, when Dustin Hoffman won for Kramer, I was so riveted by, yeah. you know, the rewards yeah. and all that. But now it's just like, God, shut up, you know? Just, yeah, and I, I, these guys, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from them. Being a movie star, I'm sure, is a very difficult thing. I've never had to carry a movie. I've never had yeah. to do anything like that. I show up and make funny faces and go away. You know, I, I respect the hell of it. I just meant that like, you're only seeing a small, very, very small drop of the potential talent in Hollywood on, in, on the screen at any given time. 
any given and, time. And it's yeah. hard for me to then elevate those people because I go, great, they've been very fortunate and they're maybe better than me, which is yeah. fine. <laughs> I've come to that reality too, and, and that's fine. And they're better than me and they should be rewarded and everything. But I also went and saw a stage reading the other day where my friend John blew my mind, you know, and John can't get an agent. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's I remember that. Yeah. Well, let's sure. let's watch your uh, let's watch your reel and see. Uh, speaking of here. blowing people's yeah, lives. you're gonna talk. You're speaking of exactly. Wait, what kind of excuses do I need to make before this reel? No, nah, this is good stuff, man. This uh, is, let something. me let me find you here. Uh, you here? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Hi. Modern Family. My lucky day. Thank you for that, but I'm afraid I'm taken. It's too bad. Is it so hard for me to meet someone? <laughs> I, um, I have the perfect guy for you. He has a great sense of humor, big heart. I have a thing for redheads. He's with me, uh, the other one. Him, pass. He's been lurking around here for weeks. Like I'm impressed he's Southern California's number one realtor. No, he's not. <laughs> All right, so let's stop. So, the, so he's trying to pawn you off on a guy that yeah, I always forget that guy's name. He's a great actor, guy, comedian. Uh, anyway, he's the guest star. Him. So uh, that other guy and and Ty Burrell's character are rivals, you know. And, and then so they're at a gay bar. They were on their way to Palm Springs, and I don't remember the characters' names, but he wanted to stop by the gay bar he used to go to. And Ty Burrell's character, who isn't gay, is like, "I'm game. Like, I'm your your brother, and we're gonna go do this." And then when they got there. Uh, he ran into that guy who he didn't know was gay in real life. And I can't remember why he was trying to pawn me off, but he was trying to get me to go with him. And I thought he was him. And then, so he thought, I think that they're a couple. I think that the redhead and Ty Burrell are a couple. Oh, okay. In this scene, which is important, but interesting side note, uh, when I was going through these photos today, I came across a bunch of old photos from Utah Shakespeare Festival, which I know you also worked at before I did, which is another weird connection we had. And I, I was actually there in 1996, and my ex-wife and I, we met there, and she came back the next year, 97, and I couldn't come back because I joined Equity because I was at ACT, and they didn't hire young people at Equity, only the main people were Equity actors. Anyway, but I came back and visited, and that season, Ty Burrell was at Utah Shakespeare. A Penn State grad. Penn State I've, grad. I've, and so yeah. Ty and I hung out all that summer. So this is, you know. So you guys 20, got a chance to hang out with each other. 25 right? years later. Oh, that's great. We're working together. Oh, know, that's great. He seems like such a great guy. I hope he's, he's a very nice. Guy. Yeah, he was a cool guy. I met him a couple of times back in the day. So now <laughs> there's the next scene where you're actually with, I can't remember the character's name, uh, the, 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 the brother-in-law. I'm embarrassed that I can't remember yeah. the name. All right. He's number go. one realtor. No, he's not. This is great. What are you doing? I am so sorry. Well, you yeah. should be. Bill, hear him out. <laughs> he feels terrible. You're like the brother I never had. I say that about you all the time. Stop it. I had a totally different idea about what this was, but it's still beautiful. <laughs> That's a great scene. It was a that fun is, scene. That, that was, was one great. of the most fun scenes to shoot that I've done because we got to do I have not, you know, I've been in Hollywood for a while and I've done some stuff, but I've never, I don't get to do many big movie things. I don't shoot guns. I don't run, you know, and so to be on a motorcycle that was like on a rig, with yeah. like, you know, and there, you know, we're on a truck rig and there's a big camera truck behind us and we're going up and down this road in Griffith Park, you know, it just felt very movie making. Oh, yeah. Very, like, and it was funny know. too. And they gave oh, you a yeah. great arc, the, the lonely motorcycle guy who can't meet anybody. And, and he doesn't want to be in this situation, but he's touched by it. And it's very, yeah, very it, was, ah, it was a lot of fun. We shot uh, at a bar right down the street too, which is kind of fun. Like that bar is a bar that I live close by to. Oh, wow. wow. And, uh, and then the other part was in Griffith Park, the, the motorcycle part that you know, we just go up and down the same patch and we would turn around. There's all these like real motorcycle cops who are our security, who are there, you know, off duty cops who then do this and and they're there. And and like one guy had this awesome cop mustache that just kicked my mustache in the butt. And every time we'd come around, I'd be like, there's that mustache. And everybody <laughs> <laughs> six times. Well, oh, mustache, yeah. That's great. All right, let's see this next one. This one made me laugh too. 
this is great. So what's the, what's this from? Is this a TV show or a- This is a show called I'm Dying Up Here, which I really wish was a better show than it ended up being. It kind of fizzled, but it was a Showtime show. And it was about stand-up comics back in the in the seventies and stuff, you know, back in the day. And the set was incredible. That was another felt, felt very movie-ish, you know. Like the set was incredible. If you look on the walls, it had all these old flyers for the Smothers Brothers and all this stuff, this old comedy thing, club. And it's all about these guys trying to come up. There's people who, not this episode or whatever, but play like a young Richard Pryor and stuff like that. Oh, neat. Acting, you know. And so this is a comedy club, and uh, you're a doorman. You're a, you're I'm a, a doorman who's also trying to be a stand-up, uh, but obviously I, I'm terrible, and they never put me up on the stage, and then I get upset because somebody else. Yeah, preference. this is so great. Like, That's so great, Steve. That, that is just that is just that fantastic. Very disappointed that show didn't do better. I wasn't a series reg or anything. I had a. Uh, they, I did two episodes. One was just very brief to kind of set up my character for this episode, but it was set up that I would come back, you know, like they had lines about like, oh yeah, he's annoying, but get used to it. He, you know, it's kind of like he's always around. I was really hopeful, but it, it fizzled. It, it, oh, it didn't do well. A great scene though. And you, uh, you know, it must have been real fun for you to have because you had <laughs> you had a routine. You had oh, it. Yeah. You're, you're trying to get it out before they stop you. And oh, it was so much fun. And the, all the guys there. I, I wish I remember all those names. But you, if you watch the show, these guys have all gone on to do some other stuff now. And, uh, and, and they they were they were all really fun. And, and the you know the the blocking of that and trying to get it to work was took some effort. You know, bad. To make it all bad. It's a little. Uh, uh, it's a, it, it has a new kind of meaning now after uh, after the Will Smith thing. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was also sweating. My it was so hot in there. Oh, and that black uh, that, that jacket. jacket. They, black. I was sweating so bad that they had a double. I had a second shirt, and they had to take my first shirt and take it to the dryer and dry it. <laughs> so oh my they God. Have another one. <laughs> All those lights, you have, the, you have the movie lights themselves, the camera light, all then they have like the lights for the, the fake stage and all that. It was just hot, hot, hot in summertime, LA. Ugh, anyway. All right, that's I'm enjoying this the fucking night. That's mine. That was Sorry, mine. Guys. I came this up with that. On oh, this one's great. Oh, that that was your idea? <laughs> that, was mine. that was me. I came up with that on set. Oh, By the way, that... it is very distracting to look at your actor, scene partner in the eye and go like, you're, you're a Terminator too. You're a Terminator too. And I'm looking well, at you, trying to say words. You know what's funny is face. that he uh, apparently Robert Patrick <laughs> appeared in a yeah in an FMV video game back in the day. Oh really? Um, no, nah, I don't think it was here online, but he's in one. And somebody uh, tweeted to him, "Oh, you should be on Conversations with Curtis," and he liked it. And then oh, I really? I tried to reach out to him and say, "Hey, man, I'd love to talk with you," but I never heard back. But I think we, I haven't done a real uh you know I, I haven't made any real effort i'm still you know i don't have you know i'm not i haven't had to at this point um i'm just googling people and asking them to, <laughs> to show up but uh so know, this is this is community and uh this one's very fun uh it, it doesn't i don't think it needs any setup no so yeah i can explain wait let me go back a little bit Excuse me. Who are you guys? This is not your office. I can explain. Let me explain. <laughs> this, this little person. <laughs> oh, so so what happens is what happens is she chloroforms you. And then they freak out and they realize they've done this horrible thing. And so they decide that they're all going to lay down and pretend like they were all chloroformed, right? Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, what's his name? The guy who- the, uh, oh, Donald Glover? No, the other guy's idea, I think. I Curtis can't remember his idea. Well, the Daniel. idea is, maybe it is Donald Glover, yeah. They just panic and they just go like, well, if he's knocked out, we'll all wake up and act like we all got knocked out. Okay, but so they that's- don't, they don't, Think about the fact that Allison Bree's character <laughs> was not there when I got you know. So. All right. Oh, what's happening? Oh, we all got chloroformed. Somebody uh, chloroformed all of us. 
and now we're regaining consciousness together. I don't understand. Who is she? Why is she holding a rag? <laughs> Put it together. <laughs> the eyebrows makes the scene. The eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, some good eyebrow stuff. Oh, it's great stuff, Steve. It is just really, really fun. It's so fun to watch you. Uh, Speaking your, of the Marvel thing. movies, I had no idea until I put it together recently, but the, the Russo brothers directed that episode of Community. Oh, really? Yeah, the Russo brothers who now make all the big movies. Uh, all well, if anybody's watching this video and you didn't get a chance to, and I, this got, I'll edit it out. Like I said before, I will make sure Steve's reel is is in the the comments or in the in the description, so you guys so you have to check it out. It's really fun stuff, uh, buddy. I just took up two of your hours, and it, it felt it just felt like it flew by. Thank you so yeah. much, man, for yeah. for taking some time. I had a lot of fun. It was good to talk about. I haven't talked about these things in a long time. You know, these old things that. And gone through those photos and forever to, to find those for you. It was just a great experience. I'm glad yeah. that people care about this and they want to learn more. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, and let's, I hope this is a, I hope this opens the door to us keeping in touch a little bit more. It's, well, it's sure. It, yeah. But you know, man, it's like, uh, it's one of those things where time does get warped and strange because we hadn't yeah. seen each other in a long time but i just you know i have such a connection to you and you just feel like you know i i, I don't see you and then i do and it's we're right back to where we were you know absolutely man yeah. we should definitely uh stay in touch it's harder now with family and everything but yeah. make it happen now that sounds good all right steve well thanks so much buddy and uh yeah. i'll i'll talk to you soon i'll let you know when this thing is going to air and what we do usually is we'll i record this put it together with just a teeny bit of teeny bit of editing uh and then i will set it as a youtube premiere and so i'll let you know when that is and so what will happen is people can join uh you can let anybody you want you know if you want to invite people but we'll do like a, re a premiere like on a sunday afternoon people will join they can chat during it you and i can chat oh, during it okay. and it's and then once it's gone through its whole viewing then it becomes available for people to watch as they will but but the premiere is its own thing it's pretty fun so yeah so cool. i'll let, I'll let I you know what was the thing oh yeah cool well you know if you you know i'm, I'm a big time youtuber so uh hey, no, man. There's, there's no reason right you would on. know this yeah i don't know i don't know how these things work <laughs> days with their rock and roll music and their <laughs> and their tiktoks you know, being on my lawn with their picky talks and insta photos with their right. face face books anyway pleasure pleasure, pleasure steve man. thanks buddy talk to you soon yeah bye-bye okay well that was my interview with stephen w bailey my old friend from uh, seattle back in the day what a great guy god that was fun um so cool to catch up with him um he had so many great stories i hope you enjoyed it and uh, if you did please make sure you uh, like and subscribe to our channel please spread the word make sure people know about this that might not know about it right now and uh, and stay tuned for um v joy lee will be my next guest so we'll follow up with from cyrus to harriet thanks everyone and i will see you next time all right take care bye